come to this special conversation with the tree and industry minister. He is Katie Hammond. As you may well know, in the last few days, in fact, just over a week, there have been significant conversation around one legislative instrument he's attempting to lay in parliament for it to mature. And this is a very crucial one for him. It is the Restriction of Importation of Selected Strategic Products Regulations 2023 that is proposing to limit the, the importation of some 22 products into the country. There's been a fair bit of controversy around this, and tonight we're going to talk to him, ask him a few hard questions about it, so that we can understand a bit more why this is even necessary at this time. My guest tonight, live on the Joy News Channel, but also live pretty shortly on Joy 99.7 FM. You can catch the repeat play on PM Express at 9 p.m. Uh, later tonight is Katie Hammond. You've heard him argue on this particular subject in Parliament. He is my guest right now. Thank you, Mr. Hammond, for your time here on, yeah, right. on Joy News yeah. and on Joy 99.7 FM. Why the need to introduce this regulation? Yes, okay. Um, Evans, um, I came to this office in about, uh, was it April? Yeah, April. But immediately I came here, I, I discovered that uh, at a point in time, a cabinet had been uh, concerned uh, by the extent of uh, the import bills of this country. And indeed, I had set up a little uh, a committee of about four or so ministers, chaired by the uh, Minister of, uh, of Trade, um, to see about uh, how the country could go about uh, reducing the import bills of the country. Obviously, non bike had been done, uh, not even by the committee uh, before. Uh, the previous minister left, and um, as I said, not much had been done. But I, I, I picked it up from there. Uh, we looked at the figures. What was uh, outstanding um, uh, was the fact that uh, we, we, we realized that um, year in, year out, Ghana was expending considerable sums of our foreign exchange on the importation of um, some of these items that we labeled that. Um, selected uh, strategic uh, product. Um, of course, topping the bill will be cars, and uh, uh, particularly cars. But um, rice was not conspicuous by its absence at all. Uh, I think it, it ranked at a second or about third uh, on top there. We looked at the figures. Uh, it, was, it was quite a huge. Um, the total import bill uh, for the country, I think, in uh, 2021 was about $13.6 billion. Now, out of that, uh, it's a list which is no, uh, this is not the entire gamut of the, the, the items uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the import, uh, the import uh, uh, list uh, that uh, we have been concerned about. Uh, there have been about uh, 50 items uh, on, on the list. And um, this alone constituted about, uh, about 34 or so percent of the entire uh, imports of the country. Um, fast forward to last year, it was another close to about $12 billion uh, imports uh, into the country and uh, some of these basic items. Um, straight from uh, the pandemic and uh, all the crisis, uh, everybody seems to be aware in the country. Um, we thought that uh, something strategic uh, had, to, had to be done, something fundamental had to, had to uh, take place. We can't just continue doing uh, uh, old things and expect to get any, any different results uh, from uh, what uh, had been going on. So the thinking was is that, uh, look, the MPP government in coming to government, coming, uh, taking over the reign of uh, power uh, uh, had said that uh, we'd intend to transform the economy. We're going to transform the economy on the back of um, uh, um, uh, industrialization. 
we're going to develop our economy, we're going to go move away from the, the Gorgesberg, the, the economy that hitherto we've all been used to, to transform it. How do we transform it? You don't transform the economy um, on the back of a massive import of almost everything into the country. There has to be import substitution. But the key question is, is yeah. this the approach to deliver that? Uh, well, Where you what, restrict strategic products? That's one of the approaches, yes. Uh, so it's a two, really two-prone um, uh, uh, approach. Uh, one uh, is to ensure uh, uh, retention, conservation of the foreign reserve itself. Look at the figures that I've given you, only billions, 12 billion, 13 billion, and it's been consistent over the years, to conserve some of the money. And then in the process, making sure that you undertake local production on a massive scale. I mean, if you are able to, to balance this right, of course, at the back of it all, it's making sure uh, that um, um, you don't create any shortfalls in the country. Mm -hmm. So you, you make sure that um, uh, there is um, the monitoring of what we are importing, but at the same time, keeping an eye uh, on what is it that you, you consume at home and what you produce. In fact, a question was put to me the other day, maybe it was a rhetorical question, it was this, that if these countries from whom we import all these items uh, kept on importing, they wouldn't be producing for anybody to, um, to import, or countries like Ghana to import. So um, we thought it, it was a real option, um, really to achieve uh, two options, uh, two goals, with the option that uh, we have chosen. What, what one, goals? One uh, conservation uh, to reserve, reserve, uh, reserve quite a bit of our money. So you, you can't put year in, year out that kind of uh, amount into imports. That's what. So foreign exchange reserves is conserved. And then you come back to what I've just told you, industrialization, the development of our economy, I mean, creating uh, the local conditions for us to be able to um, produce and be self-sufficient. But we haven't done that second bit. That second bit, you put in the cart before the horse here, yeah. are you not? Because no. we don't have the local capacity yeah. in the 22 items that you've listed. Yeah. But you're going to place restrictions. How well, do we meet that shortfall? So that is why I would want us to emphasize, uh, clearly underline the point. Um, uh, let, let's be careful about the, the, the language that we're using here. It's a restriction. It's not a ban. It's not a ban. A few people have been banning the word about uh, you're banning, we are banning. We are not banning. Indeed, we cannot even do that. We are constrained by the World Trade Organization rules. Uh, not to venture into any of those things. You cannot place restrictions under those regulations um, which, um, uh, which will make it difficult for other countries to... But, but, but to what you're seeking to do yes. is what another World Trade Organization's mm -hmm. rules, they mm -hmm. call quantitative restrictions. Yes. And explicitly, generally forbidding mm -hmm. under Article 11. Well, of, of the general agreement of tariffs and trade, okay. which so, is exactly what you're uh, doing. So you look at Article 12. Article 12 uh, mandates exactly what we're doing. I mean, that's why my whole argument has been pivoted. Uh, the fulcrum of it has been about the, uh, what do you call it, the foreign exchange uh, issue, the balance of payment issues. Article that's 12, an exception Article 12 and, under the quantitative restriction. Uh, exception under 12. You know, so 12 allows uh, if uh, the issue is, uh, is geared towards... Uh, boosting the country's uh, foreign exchange reserves. The, the but the rules say, yeah. if you intend to do that, you must notify the WTO. Have you done so? Um, uh, why? We're taking them in stages. We're taking them in stages. Um, we are consistently making the point. We are not banning anything. We are mandated uh, by the rules. We are allowed by the rules to conserve our reserves. I mean, they which you would ultimately be informed about the processes that we have put in place. We are not banning anything. We are saying that we are restricting by a certain procedure. And procedure is what, if you look at the documentation, you would notice by some sort of uh, import, um, uh, import regulations. Um, you see, there's also another part of it that I think hasn't been properly considered. And this is the fact of... Uh, uh, that all in the, and fees into the, uh, the, the foreign exchange, uh, the, the country's coffers issues that I have raised. There are, there are people who, who import into the country and uh, uh, they, declare, they declare whatever value there is, all right. They pay whatever there is initially to, to pay. 
I am told that uh, following from that, there has been considerable difficulties in um, tracking uh, all the VATs and the uh, sale, uh, uh, what call it, income that should be paid to government and all of that. You know, by now attempting to institute what we are trying to do, obviously this will become quite transparent because um, you would declare how much is it that you want to import. We know the figures. You will come back subsequently to want to import again. We would then want to know from you what happened the last time. I mean, if you know the figures, obviously GRA will then have access to the books and then, uh, of course, there will be determination of whether this has been paid, this hasn't been paid or not. There is to pay in the right duties well, is what you're you, you, you stressing. To make sure that, um, I mean, the country is not being fleeced in a circumstance that uh, uh, people have been prone to do it. So that, again, also goes to conserve uh, our, our, our reserves and, of course, uh, uh, greater openness in the system. You, let's talk about the second objective for doing this, which is to, in essence, empower local production. Yes. Right? yes. Do you admit that, if that is your objective, that yes. this particular piece of legislation places the mm. cart before the horse? Well, I don't know. You keep saying that. Well, let me understand. Why do you say that? Because yes. if you restrict, yes. And you don't have enough local production. Well, you see, uh, then you're going to create a, a big maybe, challenge. Maybe you're locally. not focusing on this. I've said it so many times. We are not banning. No, restricting. We're restricting. Yes. But we're restricting to the extent that we don't create farming in the country. How do you propose so, to do that? Well, exactly. Industry? So you see the committee that has been put together. Agriculture Ministry, uh, Ministry, how many of them? Um, you got you a have, copy you of have ministry, You have the Ministry of Agriculture, you yeah. have the Finance Ministry, you have yeah. the GRA, yeah. you, you have... have uh, food and, uh, food and, uh, food and uh, whatever, uh, what called FDA? Yes. They, they are all there. Go to the pig. They are all Including there. The, 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 the associations like so AGI? All of them. All of them. And so there is this committee that meets and monitors food production in the country. So it's not a simple question of just yes, um, sitting down one afternoon and determine that you can get a certificate or permit or not. No. The ministries responsible, particularly our Greek, uh, we, there have been quite a lot of liaison between our ministry and our Greek ministry before we came out uh, with this. Uh, we, we thought through. Um, if in the end, uh, the committee through the Greek ministry tells us that uh, the, there's a deficit, the deficit between uh, production and consumption in the country is this much, so this much has to be imported, it will be allowed through. It's as simple as that. So you, what, what you're saying is you would allow imports yes. so far as it doesn't create shortage locally? Absolutely. And of course, so far as also it doesn't flood uh, the, the, the system. So to the extent that there wouldn't be starvation in the country, we would ensure that the right quantity is allowed into the country. What we would not do and repeatedly I'm making this point is to simply get up and uh, arbitrarily suggest that well we restricted the import of this we have restricted you might well say that the word uh, restriction is a misnomer and uh, you might you might be right in saying that because it doesn't seem to me that uh, right from the word go we're going to restrict the extent that you, you may be tempted to quit a restriction to banning, but that won't be entirely accurate. We will be restricting, not in the context of banning, but restricting in the context of keeping an eye on it and then making sure that at the same time, uh, the production at home is beginning to match our consumption. At a point when there is a equilibrium somewhere, uh, then uh, the system will be looking at whether there's a need to continue with the importation. But of considering, matters. if you look at rice, the big ones, you yes. mentioned them, the yes, big ones. Sure. Considering that as we speak, 2020, I mean the last data yeah, that's available. Sure. 220 we, something million dollars. Exactly coming in. But in terms of the metric tons yes. that we were consuming, yes. some 1.4 million Ton, metric, metric tons, tons of that as of 2020. Yeah. If you look at what we are producing locally, 622,000, yes. that, that's a huge gap there. Yeah. That needs to be bridged. Yes. I put it to you that the restrictions won't solve this particular problem. Even if you restrict and say yeah. we still produce 222, until you have government policies mm -hmm. that empowers local yeah. producers yes. to grow the production over time, you that. are going to have a challenge. No, I understand that. No, there process. won't be a challenge. I understand that. Again, uh, if your argument is still revolving on the fact that you, you suspect that we are banning, then we'll get into this conundrum. But you're restricted. But if you're, See, that's what I'm saying here. Yeah, so, so, in other words, in, in, a, in, a more, in a more realistic 
question will yes. be on day one of yes. this. Yes. You would have to restrict yes. the importation of rice, for example. And, uh, day one of this, I and, may not. And allow, allow, and and not. And allow two, 622,000 metric tons to be produced locally. No, no. And no. so you can't import anything more than that difference. That's well, what yes, you're that is the difference. That, yes, that's, sure. that's what you're yeah. proposing. But, the, but I was going to put it the other way around. Maybe we would have arrived at the same destination. Uh, but I was going to say that maybe, as you said, day one, which is from today or from the maturity of the airlines, yes. uh, we won't be we won't be restricting anything at all. If it's to the law says within three months, people can apply to you. No, no, we apply. Of course, yes. The physical application would be undertaken. But whether by so doing we, we stop bringing in anything altogether is another matter. Yes, they would apply um, for the purpose of getting a 20 million uh, metric tons, 40 million metric tons. I would have looked at the figures. The committee would have looked at the figures. They would have presented me with the data and looking at it, I would have thought that, well, how much is needed? Um, 100 and whatever uh, tons, yes, it can be imported. Nothing. Uh, would have been lost. Yeah, but th that is the rise where the data is available. But, uh, no, but, we're, but keeping, we're keeping a good eye on the, on the data. Let me, let me tell you about this. We have been particularly concerned about rice because it's all basically the staple of the country. Yeah. Yeah, so we got companies like the guys that you met here just before you came mm -hmm. in, Ola, they had come to explain to me the installed capacity. Consistently over the last so many uh, months, we've been talking to uh, what you call it, Zoom Lion, uh, Zoom Lion, you know them, uh, just one group of uh, companies. In fact, they had promised us that if we had been able to put through the, the, the mechanism into operation, the mechanism, by this December, they will be producing so much uh, to augment whatever it's already um, uh, uh, produced in the country. Um, so uh, imports could be, uh, to be restricted. But of course, we had to do a roadshow um, uh, uh, for purpose of consultation to get all those um, stakeholders involved for us to, to measure um, uh, the the, the, the barometer uh, of the country before we undertake this process. So I was, I was talking about the other items on the list. Yes. You have stuff like fish. Well, it's stuff from the top. You, well, well, I mean, we've talked about rice. Yeah, we've talked about rice already. A few more there. You, 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 have, you have poultry, for example. Yes. And if you speak to the Poultry Farmers Association, they say we don't even produce up to 1% of what the demand locally. That's not my... Information. Uh, they don't tell me that they don't produce well, one percent. I mean, it is true. I, um, the uh, local production mm -hmm. uh, far, uh, far. I, it's, I, I it's far the ministry, let, let me call, let me call the exact figures. Yeah. So, four hundred thousand metric tons is the demand locally. That's right. We are currently producing locally fifty-seven thousand. Yeah. To okay. be very specific, fifty-seven thousand eight hundred seventy. Yes. Uh, you know, metric tons of of, of poultry. Yes. That's a huge gap. You're yeah. talking about a significant gap. Yeah. In fact, what we import yeah. still lives. A gap. Mm. We're not importing all that we need for the local market already. Well, we're not importing all. We're, not importing we're assuming yet. that uh, we'll produce something. So my, my point is, yeah. how does your policy yeah. address this huge gap without creating a shortage that shoots price up and creates inflation? Well, uh, at the risk of repeating myself, let me take you back. And that's what consistently I'm saying, that we are not burning. So in this particular instance of uh, uh, poultry. Uh, poultry, we may simply have to regulate, observe, uh, evaluate what's going on, and then uh, decide on the, how we go forward. It's the case that if we're importing, say, a thousand metric top, a million, whatever, of poultry, we probably could, would keep on producing to the extent that we are not bridging the gap. But if the system that we put in place, the help that we intend to give to uh, the poultry farmers and all the uh, mechanisms that we put in place, if it's able to catch up, we hope that going forward, we'll be able to bridge the gap and that uh, the export import into the country will be reduced. Looking at it, if um, uh, having put all the uh, uh, factors together, uh, there's still the risk that uh, putting uh, uh, restricting in the terms of not allowing anybody to bring uh, poultry into the country would affect uh, affect the country. We won't. We we we're going to rationalise. You know, it's not. So insanity is not going to break loose um, because uh, we, we're trying to restrict. We, we would monitor as much as we can and uh, make sure that we balance, the, we, we balance the system. We'd want to encourage local farmers, we want to encourage local poultry, uh, but at the same time, I've also told you, we're also keeping our eyes on, the, on the, our foreign reserves. But that can never be at the expense of the ability of people to feed themselves in the country.
this, the architecture of the bill, as I've read, creates room for corruption, for rent-seeking behavior, does it not? This committee that answers only to you, in fact, you can decide, even when they recommend to you, whether to grant a permit or not. That, that creates room for corruption. You disagree? Uh, it's, 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 I, I am tempted to use uh, so many phrases when it comes to some of this, but I'll contain myself. It just, it just annoying, you know, it's just annoying what is suggested that uh, and I don't think you belong to the camp of uh, some of the other colleagues uh, who see nothing uh, good in this and uh, suspect that it's, it's yet towards uh, uh, making, uh, well, lining the pockets of uh, uh, people who obviously are not accountable. It, it, it's silly. I, you know, um, let, let them take the, the necessary few minutes and read through uh, the documentation. The committee consists of A, B, C, I think about my last count was about 13 or so. Mm. Now, 13, you have the deputy minister of my ministry here who will be the, the chairperson, and then uh, there will be uh, somebody representing from our Greek ministry. Let me go Not, to them well, for, sure, for the sake of those who are watching. Yeah, By the way, yeah, you're, sure. you're also live now on Joy 99.7 FM. This would have been top story time, but we are speaking to the trade and industry minister. Katie Hammond, on the back of the controversy uh, that has erupted on his proposals to bring in a legislative instrument that will restrict selected strategic products in terms of its imports. And we're having a conversation with him also on Joy, on the Joy News Channel. Later tonight, you can catch the full interview on PM Express from 9 p.m. But to the point, though, you have the Ministry of Trade and Industry represented. Yeah. Um, and the individual there must not be anybody below the rank of a deputy minister. So I guess your deputy chair, minister will represent you yeah. uh, and he will chair. Yes. You have the Minister of Food and Agriculture yes. also there. Yes. Somebody not below the rank of a director. Yeah. We have the Ministry of Finance. You have the Ministry of Employment, Labor yes. Relations, Ministry yeah. of Interior. Yeah. You have the Bank of Ghana, yeah. Custom Division of the GRA yeah. represented the Food and Drugs Authority. Yep. The Ghana International Trade Commission also represented. Mm -hmm. And then the AGI. Yep and the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Your point about this so is? It's a very powerful uh, committee. Now, where it leaves room for corruption, I'm not so clear. Now, after this committee has decided on whether there is a need to import some more products or to retain uh, whatever it is, as it is, anyone, anyone who is unhappy with the outcome of the committee's deliberation has the right to appeal to the minister. I'm not so sure, no, before appeals to the minister. At this stage, the minister, then the committee recommends to the minister. They recommend it. It isn't the minister who had his whim and caprice decide on what to do. There is a recommendation by the committee. But you decide whether to take that recommendation or uh, not. Well, so, well, we'll go to the next bit. The minister then decides. Um, you are right. I would have thought that if uh, this powerful committee is decided that um, a, 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 what do you call it, um, a permit or a license should be granted, a minister will see no reason to defer to 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 defer from that those. that power is given I to. I have you. no have no doubt at all. Let's go to the check on the minister. Now, when the minister decides not to grant, that is a fear of my colleagues articulated the other day on the floor of a parliament. The minister Katie Yaman will decide because there are NDCs involved. They were very clear. NDC involved are looking at their faces and whatever, that is how much they, 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 they fell below the standards to, to, to describe this matter, would decide that they're not going to grant it. The minister wasn't going to grant it. All right. They, what they haven't read is that when the minister refuses uh, to grant uh, your license, to cancel your license, all the negatives that uh, they outlined, uh, you have the right then to appeal back to the minister to review his That's judge right. and jury. Uh, well, it's all over the place. Section the, 18 says appeal to you. Uh, the same person well, who are rejected it uh, may be uh, a few well, months well, back. Well, uh, you, let's get there. You, you show me where the section 18 is. So if the minister is asked to review his decision. Is there in the court, Supreme Court, when they take it, make a decision, the Supreme Supreme Court uh, has jurisdiction within which they are asked to review yeah, their but own it, decision. But they add a few more judges to it. Uh, but no, let me go but to in your case, uh, it comes to you, well, the deal. same person who rejected let that permit. Let me deal with it. Let me deal with it. So when I refuse uh, following a review, you then have a recourse to the law court. Is there black and white? So the minister, be it Katie Hammond, be it whoever, has not absolute control 
and burden control on the outcome of this. Go to that particular section. But within the act, though, yes. you are the final authority here. No, I Even am not. The appell you are the appellate no. body. Where is the appellate? Yes. No, well, the appellate? You, you are to, the only person. Go to the appellate. Tell me where. Well, I'm let, here. where is let, let's go to section 18. What does it, what let does me go it to say? section 18, what which I, I quoted what, earlier. What, what does it say? Section 18 says, yes. one, yep. a person who is aggrieved. Yes. By the refusal of the minister, not yes. only to grant the permit, but also yeah, sure. after the renewal has been yeah. has been turned sure. down. May within 14 days after the receipt of the notification of the decision of the minister, yeah. apply to the minister yes. in writing for a review of the decision of the minister. The minister shall, within 14 days after receipt of an application for a review of the decision of the minister, A, take a decision on the application, yes. and B, communicate yes. the decision in writing yeah. to the aggrieved person. He ends yeah. there. It doesn't end there. Well, tell me if there's been a, an, an amendment there. to this. It doesn't end there. Is that what you have? That's what I have. Oh, well, you see, that's why you should, uh, you should be careful when well, you well, when was this this review. When you're getting this, you're getting this. Three. Have you seen the three? Talk to me about three, because well, I, I don't have it in, don't the, have in the version uh, I have. Well, you probably can read better. Look well, at the three. You know, so three give, me, give me your document then. I'll give you well, this one. Th so this, throw, is, this is well, my you document. Your you got your You well, see, generally, you should, be, you should be very careful. Well, you know, where do you hijack this from? Well, well, well this, this, this is from Parliament. I don't know what that is. This is from Parliament. This is the same parliamentary document. Well, I don't know about that. Three says, a person dissatisfied with the decision of the minister under sub regulation two, may seek redress in court. But my question to you really is, yeah. this is before Parliament, and they mm. got them from Parliament. When no, no, was this? But be careful, there's nothing before Parliament No, now. of course, I mean, of course, I know, because, no. you know, but there's the pre-laying, the pre-laying conversations have happened. Yeah. So your colleagues have it, and yeah. that's where I got this one. Yeah. When was this clause added? I'm not sure, it was always there. It was, it was always, always there. there. I'm not sure why, uh, why, i tell but, you but, what, but, I don't know where you but, got but this But it's from. a fair question, when, when was this? No, when no, no, it's always been there, it was always, Look at the other one. Two, two. I just told you about the one that they thought they were interested and later on shifted their interest. Uh, the cement one. Uh, the yeah, we'll come to the there. cement one. Yeah, but it's clearly there. So but, I don't but, know but, where but, but, but my substantive question remains. It's always been there. My, question, my substantive question remains. Yes. You're actually saying that, again, within the confines of this act, yeah. You are the final authority. Of course, the courts then have to now decide whether yeah, you're right somebody, or not. Somebody, administratively, somebody would have to be the authority to make a decision. Yeah. In this case, it's uh, double laid. The committee and then to the minister. You're not happy with the minister's decision, go to court. But, but, why, but, why, but why do you want to create that avenue for the minister to have that level of discretion, which obviously from our history leaves room for you to be Magically, uh, uh, so that's a I tell you, but, I don't let beyond you, don't, don't let remember that. that. that beyond that, you, there'll be ministers, there'll be that, ministers, there'll be that, ministers that, beyond you who so have to you enforce at, this. Why are you looking at we are creating a wonder? Okay, let's talk but about the minister. You. But why this do you is think institutional? No, no, absolutely. But why do you, you think you, that you, this you, is an embodiment of corruption? You may be a saint. No, 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 no. You may be a saint, but somebody may occupy your seat tomorrow. No, claim to be a seat. No, somebody may occupy your seat tomorrow. And that person who doesn't believe in cannot lay claim to infallibility. But nobody is going to access. Um, this and be able to thereby corrupt themselves. I mean, what do you make of the reference to the court? I mean, I don't understand. But uh, in how, this country, yes. it goes without saying. Be that, careful. That, be careful that about the this. But the ultimate makers. I mean, Mr. Kate, I mean, yeah. you know you're a lawyer, no, so you know. Yeah, they're, they're, even if parliament decides, yes. the yeah. ultimate decide, there's mm -hmm. always a court. So you, mm -hmm. actually, this clause yes. is just stating the obvious. That what? That, that, what? that in, in all circumstances, yes. if you're dissatisfied with any decision of any yeah. entity, yes. You can go to court. Yeah. You have recourse but to court. But, but, but the fact that you stated it here, if you are conscious of the fact that much. the addition asks nothing to you, then why were you hammering on the fact that well, it isn't on your document well, and that I creates mean, avenue for corruption? Now but that I've seen yeah. the updated document, yeah, well, I'm asking yeah. a fundamental question. It was question. always there. Yeah. So, well, but notwithstanding this, that what? Oh, yeah, yes. My, my it, question to you is: Yes, including this fact here. But let's it's let's stating it, the obvious. Let, yeah. So even if you didn't include it, so we can ignore that one. So you can ignore that someone could have gone to court. Judicial review. I'm conscious about that. Yes. So. What is the point? My that point doesn't is, add anything. My yeah, point so, is mm -hmm. to have this checks and balances built into this. Why yes. don't you have an appellate body other than yourself? Uh -huh. To do what? To adjudicate over your decision. What does it say? So what? The judicial, uh, it, I think it makes it more transparent. You're, you're conflating the issue. I don't think you're getting it right. What does the appellate body do? What, what does it do? The appellate body, well, what it, does it, it do? It will, it will decide whether or not they can review your own decision. And then they're, they're, they're going to court. What does it do? Well, of course. I'm saying that whether you include this or not, yeah. even at that appellate body case, when yeah. you're not part of it, yeah. that person still has a cause to court. So, so I don't get it. It makes the process it. more transparent. When at the, at the level of the committee, 
Which committee? The, if yeah, you can create the, 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 what has been suggested, let Parliament be the appellate body. I told you about that. Don't pretend that you knew that when I told but you about the MP that. Said that, 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 that. No, the NPs, I didn't quite understand what it was. I it didn't make sense to me. My leader, Jose uh, Chebunsu, said to me, was it possible to rope in parliament at this stage? How do you do that? This, uh, this is administrative structure. Get parliament to do what? This is an ally. I don't quite understand how this should be done. Fortunately, back to the Attorney General, and uh, he says he doesn't understand that. What the Attorney we General has given us opinion on this already. Uh, uh, Attorney General. You know, that's why I, we've got to be very careful. People shouldn't assume that your minister is sitting in your office, sitting around your desk, and you have the right to do whatever you want to do. This thing has been to Attorney General's office more than many times. What's his view on this? Uh, Attorney General is, um, um, is, okay is, okay is signed his imprimatur on it um, before. Uh, so he's um, okay then yeah, before, okay, you, before yeah, you? He's okay on it. Yeah, you know. And then when we went to Parliament the other day, and the suggestion was that we should still make some additions, we still went back to the Attorney General. And um, uh, the particular one that you're talking about, the constitutional, whatever I told you about, um, I think again, I didn't understand. He has no comprehension. He, he didn't quite make As sense. As in coming back to Parliament. For what? what, what she, but but, but Evans, let, let's get this matter very clear. You seem to be so agitated about the matter of an appeal. An appeal process is the equivalent of a review, except that there are different processes. But when a decision is made by a decision maker, an administrative decision maker, whether it was put there or indeed let me share this with you uh, maybe you are right my view was that it did not make any sense adding that particular to it of course i, I that particular the, the course, three yeah the three it didn't make so any you sense. agree with me I, then? on that point i do but i was told that uh, to for the comfort of those who will be reading and who are not all lawyers because but I made, uh, but I, made, I'm I made, a lawyer. I, made, I, made I, I saw through it. I made a fan about it. That, but lawyers, you know, you want money. You know, so, you know, live it like that. If your clients, they will come to you. If the decision they don't like, they will come to you. And, but it was thought that, so that there is no doubt about anything. Put it there. You're talking about an appeal, appeal, appeal. That is appeal to the legal process out of the jurisdiction of this room, out of the uh, bosom of the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry. The judicial process takes over. If it is appeal, what kind of appeal? Appeal to the court or appeal by a different set of uh, a panel? I don't understand. So, it, Ms. Alma, my, my, my only question to you is, let me, I want to stop using the word appeal and okay. use the word that your own regulation uses, which yes. is review. That's right. I'm saying, okay. within the confines of this ministry, That's because right. you are champion in this, yes. you're saying that it will be more transparent when you institute, when somebody wants to review your initial decision, to go to another body other than yourself. What, what is the, the judicial review, my body? Because the principle in court, yes. when you want to review, yes. is that's why they have the appeals court. Even at the Supreme Court level, they add two or three more judges to the panel. Yeah, for just so to create a, set, a, a sense that the same individuals and the same people who Evans, be adjudicated Evans, for the review. Evans, you are I'm losing, saying, you are losing balance on no, this I mean, matter. I'm you just, are completely I'm just, losing I'm just asking. I'm just this. asking. No, no. In this case, though, yes. in this case, though yes. you say for the first time, yes. I won't accept your permit. I reject it. Okay. Then that same person, yeah. if they want to review, yeah. must come back. But to you know you. what they do? I may have missed out something fundamental. That's why we have the principles of judicial review. I'm not going to lecture you on judicial review Please principles. No, I wouldn't. But that is why you go back to the person who took the decision, draw the attention to the irrationality of the decision that they have made, mm. the illegality of the decision they have made, the unfairness in terms of the procedural impropriety of the decision that they have made, which they may not have been conscious of. So you draw the attention to the, uh, these matters, they sit down for the purpose of review. If they are not happy with it. It used to be, and I tell you, in the, in the, in the, in the civil courts, it used to be order 42 of the Civil Procedure Act of the High Court, CI 47, order 42, review by the, the, the judge who took the decision, had the power to review their own decision. It's now been taken away from. But he's a judge. Reasons. You are a politician. But, but that is the matter. A fundamental but, difference. But so you are a politician. How can I accept that completely? That is why I've made my decision amenable to the court, the highest decision-making process body, not politically, but the judiciary is a high court. And when we say that you can uh, seek review, administrative decision, straight to the high court. How best could it be? 
you put in any appellate processes and whatever, there is still uh, what you call a tribunal or whatever, it's still an inferior body. I've given you the authority, the power to go to the highest judicial body, uh, uh, the process of judicial decision making in the country, the High Court. What is the complaint? I they will strike down my decision if in the end it is thought that my decision is tainted with illegality, rationality, procedure and fairness, they will strike my decision down. Evans, I don't know. I don't plead guilty to this particular argument. I want to take you back to the floor of parliament. Yes. Your leader in the house, J. Mr. Bungs, was on his feet yes. in open parliament yeah. and said, well, Mr. Hammond should make amendments based on the meetings you've had yes. and return on Monday with some of the... Which would have been today. Which would have been today. Yes. And then... Um, I got also on my show speaking to um, Carlos Ahinkra, who gave me a bit more specifics. Like you met with a minority and agreed that you're going to, this particular contentious clause, Which one? you're going to include Which this one? parliamentary appellate body. Well, well, we, we that, you, that you actually agreed to do so. True. Well, well, I just want to well, check. No, no, listen, I've, I've already explained. My view, my view was that it didn't make much sense. Okay. I, mean, it wasn't much, I mean, number one, let's get it right. Uh, it wasn't the view of the committee. I've told you, Article 11, Clause 7 of the Constitution does not give anybody the, uh, the right to preview my document. I mean, uh, when I say you my... just lay and you the, count the dates. It's as simple as that. You see, look at Article 106 of the Constitution. Procedure for um, enacting law. Absolutely different. The framers of the Constitution in their wisdom did two things. One, legislat uh, legislative instrument. This is how it's going to be done. Proper legislation, bills, uh, which would then lead into substantive acts. You have to go through this processes, processes, lay before it, the committee, the amendments on this. But on a particular matter of uh, uh, LI, uh, orders and uh, those regulations, very straightforward. Order uh, Clause 7 of Article uh, 11 says you, the promoter of it, invariably the minister, lay it in parliament when it's presented, gazette it, when it's gazetted, 21 days maturity into law if parliament doesn't want it the subsidiary committee of parliament doesn't want it after 21 well not after 21 before the 21 days they come back and then tell parliament that uh, um, we don't like it and then by a majority of uh, two-thirds of all members of parliament annul it so what happened to uh, but that's the whole point come. that was the basis of the argument if you were listening the other day that uh, i was raising and that this whole concept of a pre-laying and whatever how did it come about i don't understand in deference to my friends to the speaker Aban Babin wasn't forcing that I go and see anybody because he knew the, the he clear in his mind. He just referred them to it, uh, knowing what it is. What are you guys saying? I previously it wasn't Aban, was one of the deputy speakers. Oh, I agreed that I was going to sit down with my, my colleagues. But in that meeting, I tell you today, they added bits and pieces uh, across the committee. Who are you referring the to? The committee, uh, the subsidiary committee of uh, uh, legislative, uh, legislative uh, the subsidiary committee. Uh, yeah, uh, like Which is traditionally chaired by the, uh, the, my, the minority. minority. And this time chaired by, well, yeah, this, uh, this parliament chaired by my good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Dominic uh, Aine. Aine. Yeah, he chaired it. And all of them, all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and all the members yeah. were there. Mm -hmm. The proposition has absolutely nothing to do with this constitutional thing. I didn't understand. What, what did I they didn't, propose? I will tell you, I, he is a, a senior lawyer. He understands some of this. How could he possibly have thought about the uh, minister coming back to parliament on matters like this to engage uh, uh, in the processes of parliament? What does it mean? So their business, uh, their, their concern was uh, um, some, of the, uh, some of the items that were put on there. Other, another issue was um, um, uh, the justification for this whole um, bill. bill. Uh, no, this whole, uh, I'm accusing people for using the wrong terminology now. I'm also, uh, you you bill. nearly use the uh, word bill. bill. No, no, the bill. It's not a bill. It's an ally. It's an ally. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's bill. It's, um, as I said, yeah, uh, of course, uh, of course. laws. Of course. Uh, so uh, for the legislative, uh, those laws that eventually become uh, act of parliament. Yeah, so they made. Uh, they were absolutely insignificant. The conclusion was that, subject to this um, uh, suggestion they have made, they were quite happy. They were quite happy. You agreed to yeah. include the suggestions that, in this document? Uh, in no this, uh, yes, they have all been included. They went, they were so infinite smile. They were absolutely nothing. They were quite happy. So let's, let's bullet them. So yeah. what, what, what's going to happen Then following from there, okay. following from there, um, can, we make, can, we, can we lay 
suggestion from uh, some of the front uh, front benches, minority front bench. Oh, our our rank our ranking uh, the chairman. Yeah, the chairman will obviously be there. The chairman hasn't reported to us. I don't understand why he hasn't reported to you. Then I got to know that he's reported to them. You mean uh, Dominic Ayine? Uh, yes, hasn't reported. Well, that was the allegation that he hadn't reported to the leadership. The outcome of the, of the meeting, which you just talked them. about. Yeah, that's right. It turned out not to be true. He had reported to them. Uh, then what do we do? Okay, T, let's but, but was that outcome a yeah. consensus position that was going but to be communicated? But as far as I'm concerned, within the committee, it was absolutely a consensus. So you're saying that the NDC, yeah. NDC chair it's side happened, and, yeah. and the MPP chair side all agreed yeah. at a committee yeah, level? Yeah, completely agree. Too late. Yeah, sure, too late. With, yeah. with the change being yeah. in the re reviews or return to parliament. I can read to you. I mean, please, please, I would love to. I love to. I mean, this is a sure fact, as you have seen. And I would love for you to read what the actual text is. Based on the agreement that you reached, um, can I have my phone? Please, sir. Uh, Please do. Give me and and by the way, you're, you're still live here on 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 the Joy News channel. You are live on Joy ninety nine point seven oh, yeah, FM. This this is a very important matter, and well, I, I really want to get the minister to get to the well, no, heart I mean, of it. I appreciate and, and, and also give us the facts um, as as he has it, so that we can interrogate that. And so. He's referencing uh, the, the I, consensus I agreement that was reached. I, I, I quite understand with, with the majority of what minority. I'm going to do. But I Absolutely. think it's important so that this duplicity on the part of some people should abate. It's completely unnecessary for the processes that we go through there. I think people should be, should be transparent enough, should be men enough to accept the reality of what happens over there. I mean, it, it, it isn't in the domain, it isn't uh, in the province of any particular individual to insist that. I would not, I would not allow a particular process that is legitimately mandated by the constitution to 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 go on on the uh, to to undergo the proper processes in the in the court, in the in the in the house. It's not it's not your gift. It's not your prerogative. It is look in the in the in the in the boxing ring. We have the rules. Courts have the rules. Parliament have the rules. The whole country have their superior rules in the form of the constitution. We should be following the constitution and not because it doesn't suit our political gastronomy. We decide that, that we, we are going to be a uh, uh, stumbling block. We're not going to agree to this. I'll get there. I mean, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's... I, I, I will allow you time to look for that. It's coming. It's not... It's not yes, it's not it will. Sure. I'm, I'm going to take a quick break. Yes. When I return, yes. we'll refer to that consensus position. Katie Hammond says was reached with the minority uh, at the committee level, uh, which was supposed to be presented to the House for consideration, that they will pave way for the laying. And then we'll interrogate what that really was. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, this is live on the Joy News channel. It's also live on Joy 99.7 FM. In the last uh, few days, as you may have noticed in Parliament, there's one subject that is uh, dividing the House. It, it's, it's a subject uh, that we're talking about uh, tonight here on Joy 99.7 FM and also on the Joy News Channel. It, it is the subject of the restrictions that the Minister for Trade and Industry is seeking to place on some 22 strategic products, which is causing a bit of a consternation in the House, but also, uh, a, as you've heard from many interest groups, today a petition has been submitted to Parliament by some of the uh, parties aggrieved at this, asking for this to be redrawn completely. The minority side is clear that they will not support this in any form. Um, AGI is on the committee uh, that will be granting the permits uh, for those who may be seeking to import into this country. Uh, they obviously are for it, and they want room for the minister to lay for it to mature. This is a major subject, a subject of national interest, and so we're spending some time with the trade minister who is uh, proposing this to go to the house, and he's with me. Before we went for the break, you had stated that you had a meeting yes. with the Subsidiary Legislation Committee, yes. at which meeting you said that there was a consensus position reached, subject to the inclusion of some amendments. Yes. I wanted the specifics of these amendments no, and I'll, what the committee I'll said. I'll give you, dated the uh, uh, 22nd of uh, November 2023, and it, I would normally not be divulging this, but um, because you see, constitutionally, there's nothing like this. There can't be any such report. The only report on these items is when 
I have laid the document and it's been referred to the committee. And as I've told you, if uh, by two test majority, the committee reports back and says that they don't want it, uh, the committee wasn't happy, and they are recommending to the House to annul it, then the House by um, two tests majority can, uh, uh, can annul it. Now, we hadn't even gotten there. So this pre-laying exercise, it's a convention. It's something that has been put in place. And indeed, it was primarily for election CIs, not for this sort of thing. But anyway, event I obliged because um, uh, my colleagues were saying that they want to have a look at it and all that I was quite happy to let them have a look at it this is 22nd of December and this is um, uh, 22nd what, of November uh, forgive me yeah. 22nd of November now it talks about reference to the discussions that we previously had because all the discussions and then talks about um, the two legislations we have told you about this is one and then the cement one and then the meeting they asked for the rationale, um, stated the rationale here. The Honorable Minister gave two reasons underlying the proposed instrument. The first reason given was that some of the items, uh, products are listed in the schedule to the draft um, regulation de demand the overlay of substantial foreign exchange to import and therefore a significant cause of the balance of payment problems of the country. The idea is that to ensure that uh, the uh, importation is restricted with a view to reducing the uh, negative impact on the country's balance of payments. The measure provided for in the proposed regulations will streamline and uh, rationalize the import bill of the country to improve balance of payment aimed at reducing the trade deficit and promoting favorable economic stabilization in accordance with Section 12 and uh, Paragraph A. Uh, sec no, according with section 12, well, and paragraph, but it's section 12A of section 13, paragraph, uh, accordance with section 12A and uh, section 13 of the Export and Import Acts 1995, Act 503. The second reason provided by the Honorable Minister was that some of the selected products will be restricted to protect the local industries that produce such products. According to the minister, Ghana is overly dependent on important products of which the local industry has the capacity to produce. And this is affecting grossly the confidence of investors who are willing to invest in these selected products. These regulations seek to limit the importation of uh, the selected strategic products and provide a platform for local industries to produce, save, to meet the demands of the population and to compete favorably with their trading partners. Members of the committee made suggestions for amendments to the substantive clauses of the regulations generally. In respect of the affected products, it was decided that cement be deleted from the list of restricted uh, imports and in its place, diapers be inserted. The explanation provided was that cement industry is proposed to be comprehensively regulated under the draft of cement uh, the industry, the one that I told you about. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the ministry proposed that uh, frozen cuts of offers be inserted as item 23 of the, uh, on, the, on the list. Frozen, frozen, uh, frozen cuts. Okay. Uh, frozen cuts. Okay. And then uh, they have another one uh, we call uh, offers. Uh, and then he says that uh, we explain that offers are categorized differently from item 2, which is the guts, the bladders, and the and stomach, stomach of animals. Yeah, Good. Well, the committee, listen to this, the committee demanded that uh, data be provided to it regarding the basis of the minister's justification for the restrictions on the basis that imports are having a negative impact on the country's balance of payments. At the end of the deliberation, the committee concluded that Subject to the proposed amendment, the minister could proceed with the laying of the instrument. And then we go to the, the other one, the cement uh, regulations. It goes on, makes similar points, and then goes on to say that the minister gave examples of the recent development in the country whereby a number of cement manufacturing factories have had to be closed down as a result of evidence that they were producing and selling substandard cements. Members made numerous uh, proposals for the amendment, which were accepted by the ministry. At the end of the deliberations, the committee took the view that the draft regulations conformed to the powers granted to the minister under the Ghana Standards Authority Act and does not violate the constitution and may be laid subject to the amendments. Conclusion generally. The committee had no reason to believe that the two draft regulations were not within the ambit 
of the parameters set under Article 11, Clause 7 of the Constitution and the Standard Orders of Parliament. And your point is? My point is this. It was on the strength of this that I proceeded to lay the document the day after. But we've heard the minority leader say that they opposed. That's what I call duplicity. This is the committee that I was compelled Contrary to the demands of the regulations, uh, demands of the constitution and the standard orders, to go before, to explain myself. And this is the report to the minority leadership. And then they come back to tell me that, well, they don't know about it and uh, whatever. Th th this was on the 22nd of November. This is the 22nd. On Friday, yes. was there another meeting where further proposals were so made? So, following them? this, following this, uh, wasn't there any other with the committee? The committee following this was done, expert, they done their work. So, the leadership of the minority side they, uh, kind of in a whispering conversation said that, uh, well, I can't tell you everything. We are colleagues, you know, so a lot of things that uh, it's, uh, you get upset when in the end of the day you think they're stabbing you in the back and then you get. Have a you bit, been stabbed uh, in the back? Well, I think so. How? I think, uh, well, I mean, you can understand from what I've just been speaking about. So the minority about. have stabbed particularly, you in the back. Yes, particularly based on what I've just read to you. I mean, I wasn't going to go anywhere before any pre laid committee. Because I've made a point, it's not mandated but, but by any constitution. To, to subsequent this, to this, on Friday morning, it was I agreed. understand there was not a meeting. There, yes. wasn't a, there wasn't a meeting with a committee. Okay. It was a meeting among the leadership. The leadership. Yeah, listen, my leader, Sir Chairman Sabunsu, took it up on himself to have a discussion with the, the minority leadership and a few of them. They called me behind the, the lobbies, uh, the division. Uh, you know the division when we go through yes. this. And, uh, what is it that we can do? What is it? Make proposition. What is it? Uh, I am bound to lay this thing. It's not a matter that I sat at my desk and then I, mean, I produced this sort of list. If you read my, my, my documentation, you will see the road show. You will see the extent of consultation. We'll come I mean, to I, that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, so, so yeah. in this informal conversation, what concession mm -hmm. did you make on Friday? Uh, what, whatever they wanted to include in there. What did they they were not significant. Indeed, ultimately, the one that they said we should put in was that to make sure the constitutional thing we talked about, that there must be some recourse. That the review that, but, comes to Parliament for final decision. No, no, no. It was this. I can rephrase it for you. It was, firstly, they, they, it was put in some amorphous and cacophonous state that I didn't understand myself. So I helped. And I said, well, if you want a reference to, to, the, uh, to uh, the committee of parliament, could it not be in this shape? that um, anyone who was aggrieved by the, uh, the decision of the minister could then petition the parliament. Could then petition parliament. That's what I suggest. And will parliament have a final decision? If the parliament takes a decision contrary to your decision, what happens? Well, that is what, that is what it was suggested ultimately, that parliament... I, I didn't quite understand that at this level, I mean, when uh, the LI, the law, this decision... Regula regulation were made on the back of a substantive act that has been through parliament. The minister could do A, B, C, D. The minister has prepared a document in which he has made a reference or uh, made provisions for a redress in the high court. Parliament doesn't sit in adjudicative capacity. But you agree to that? Well, ultimately, petition? because they were all over the place, but I made the point, I insisted that it didn't make sense. But you agree to well, that? Well, I agreed to that. But and where, I where, took it. Well, mm -hmm. I where took is it, it in the to, document? You see, the government's lawyer, uh, Cindy Amos' government lawyer, is the attorney general. And so I can show you the, the, the again, if you give me one second, is there in the writing? Have you seen that? Is in the manuscript? Is it? No, that is uh, there's something that has uh, no. Can't see your eyes. Uh, and at this moment, we are looking for the Attorney General. Yeah, no, it's not Attorney General. I was looking at the, the writing, the insertion on this document. Mm -hmm. It is there, the insertion on this document. You know? No, no, that's not it. Mm. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. to the point, so, what, no, what, what, so, yeah, so what, what are you looking for there? What, what, so one of these, it was an insertion in the manuscript, the, or the, 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 the actual phraseology mm -hmm. of what was wanted. What was then demanded uh, between uh, uh, two the leadership, uh, my side and then the other side. Yeah. Was so the two I leadership you, agreed, which yeah, is that, what you said. That, that ultimately there must be recourse to parliament. parliament. Yeah, parliament, for well, whatever reason mm. they thought. Which uh, you agree. Which well, you agreed I agreed. To. I mean, see, I keep saying that I agreed, but I said you it didn't make sense. I knew it wasn't going to fly mm. with the attorney general. You answered the question, so what happened after your agreement? So I took it because they said the attorney general should look at it. And what I, mean, the I wasn't general going to just put anything the attorney general hadn't seen. I took it to the attorney general with a lawyer from this office, and the attorney general's office was a, no way, Jose, it doesn't work like that. 
I was vindicated. So it's not going to find expression it, in the document it, So now. the final word that I've given you... That's it's what, what I've just read. Yes, yeah, what you read. It, ends, it ends with the court. It ends with the court, but, which, is, uh, which, is, which is very sensible. Which is, which is but, sensible. But that directly will pitch you, especially when you had agreed no, with uh, the minority uh, uh, majority. Uh, you like see, you again, that pitches you directly uh, against uh, the minority. Uh, 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 you know, again, uh, I have given you a precondition. I told you that I agreed, but I knew it didn't make sense. Mm. But there were some people who were pressurizing and pushing that it should be in there. I'm telling you, you will put it in there. The Attorney General rejected. Yeah, but the Attorney General rejection, is, this makes it a deal killer, is it not? No, it doesn't. Why it doesn't? doesn't it? Because let's go back to basis. No one has a role in the laying of this document. Parliament is not happy with it. They march out to test majority and then acknowledge. Since what I've read to you, Attorney General, former Deputy Attorney General, now the Chairman of the Subsidiary Committee, makes it pretty clear. Your argument, but, perfect, but, within but, the but, law. But, 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 but it's not only yes. the minority side that agreed to include this. Chairman Sabons, you only agree no, too. No, no, but listen to this. Listen to this again. Chairman Sabons was with me. Both of us thought it didn't make sense. But on the floor, he said uh -huh. you will return this morning. Oh, no, we'll return and then, again, listen to me. When we are browbeating by our guys, our friends over there, we want to make this. We, we get into all sorts of rapprochement, we get into all sorts of compromises everywhere. He is the leader of the house. He wants government business to, take, uh, to, to proceed mm. uh, without uh, necessary uh, hindrances. So if it takes so much uh, compromise to get uh, government business going, so be it. So after so much uh, he ho bali ho about this matter, his view was that, okay, if uh, this uh, meets the, the demands of, uh, of uh, our colleagues over there, so be it. Particularly the phrase that whoever was not happy could then petition parliament. Now that preserved the, the position of the minister uh, in terms of the his, in terms of such review um, functions, and then it also preserved the ability of the person to seek redress in the court. Because it was in this uh, sort of mandatory, it was in this uh, uh, permissive uh, tone. Uh, you may. So if you chose to go to Parliament for review, uh, for uh, what they call it, for uh, petition to petition, you could. I mean, you could still have recourse to the to court. Parliament. Yeah, parli no, uh, petition to, to the Parliament court. and then to court for the redress. Either way, you could do it that way. Attorney General's view was that no. So what, it's what not going to happen. That could not happen. Mm. What it says is that a provision is there, and you rightly stated it didn't even have to be there, as I originally thought. It shouldn't have to be there. It was ultimately agreed that for everybody's standards, mm. everybody's uh, uh, to avoid all this headache. Let's put it there for clarity. So we put it in there. That, that is substantive. Uh, uh, listen, when the parliament <laughs> eventually is accused, well, not eventually, uh, sometimes uh, it's accused of uh, unconstitutional order, you seek regress in the court. From this very beginning, I am pro making provision for you to go to court. I don't see what you worry. And for that matter, I don't see what uh, our colleagues uh, worry would have been. The argument was that how can you take a decision like this without coming to parliament? I didn't understand it. I don't think you understand it. Mm. Parliament is not an adjudicative uh, I mean, the body. Parliament is a legislative body which is respected for that matter. Some petitions are sent to Parliament, um, ultimately is referred to some committees. This is not the function of Parliament. That was my view. Mm. Um, uh, some people agreed. Well, and then, um, the, the reality remains, you yes. don't have the support of the minority on oh, this. You would never have, uh, again, I wouldn't tell uh, you. And they've made it very clear <laughs> yeah. that we don't need they that. will shoot this down. They'll uh, do everything possible to make no, this within the through. law. Within the law. You see, you see. Yeah, you said within the law, but, see, ultimate, but have you, you, seen haven't, some, you haven't laid it still. No, have you seen, have you seen something that has been developed? some recent practice become the new normal. This particular parliament, what I've seen is that people don't like A, B, C, D, and then they are fighting. I mean, throwing things left, right, and center. Yeah. I would have thought that we'd operate within the law. I mean, a civilized institution like this parliament, we should operate within the law. But they are the represented. The minorities are represented. The interests of the people... Uh, that that you are falling people. into their trap, well, Evans. They, they you are, recall they that are, one of they them are had, the the guts, had the guts. They had the guts. I mean, I think with respect to whoever, I forgot whoever, had... Uh, let me be calm and let me controlled. But this was his phrase. We represent the good people of Ghana. I think you heard my response. Mm -hmm. Well, if the suggestion was that we on this side represent the bad people of whichever country, I almost got into a diplomatic tangle because I was going to supply the name of the country, you know, and then somehow God help me, I checked myself. You see, how could they possibly make that sort of argument that we represent the good people of Ghana and so we don't like this? 
But so I represent so quite the bad people. Uh, well, my constituency is from Katamanso. <laughs> Bonga, so I represent the bad people of Katamanso. Yeah, no, but Mr. Mr. Hammond, the yes. minority, they are not alone in objecting this. Today, today, there's yes. a petition that has been submitted yes. to the House by at least six groups asking for it to be re rejected. Civil society groups have raised similar concerns, which I put to you. Yeah. The rent sinking, the rent seeking behavior that this creates. Yes. So there is a significant number of people out there, including interested party stakeholders who cyber the minority that this is inimical to our economic interest and only creates room for politicians well, listen, to feed fat. Listen, um, uh, Mr. Interviewer, you are entitled ultimately to your rules. There's not much anybody can, uh, can argue on this point. Uh, the facts are stuck. Mm. I mean, we're all looking at the same facts. I've presented the, the facts. I mean, uh, the committee said that uh, we should uh, justify our suggestion that... Uh, 13.6 billion, 11. Point, uh, whatever billion dollars, it has a negative influence. I mean, the Saskatchewan Cemetery will be to report. That, report is replete that, with who, with can, who can make such a yeah. kind of a yeah. statement but, that's but, so much? Let me, but, conclude, uh, let me, let me mm. make my point. You know, so it's obvious. It goes without argument that it is so much. Uh, it causes so much uh, uh, damage, so much uh, effect, negative effect on the economy. Uh, that it, it, it somehow somebody has to look at it. Now, but if on the back of that it is suggested that because the NDCs and the people doing it, it is the MPPs doing it. But that's that not matter, a suggestion. Now, what is that suggestion? I mean, I mean the, the petition has been submitted today. I'm not Tell me, where is the corruption? I've told you the minister uh, is recommended to that you qualify or you don't qualify or you should be allowed to import or you shouldn't be allowed. That's a recommendation to the minister. Minister says, I agree to the recommendation. All right, if the minister agrees to the recommendation, uh, does it foster uh, the corruption? Well, if the minister then, yes. as we've seen, and, yeah. and this is no, no, also... No, 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 don't fight about. If the minister says, you are interviewing me, I'm supposed mm -hmm. to ask questions, answer questions, but yes. you also can answer one or two. No, I'm not so supposed if the to. Minister, if the minister agrees, to the, the import um, suggestion that uh, the recommendation of the committee that you can, Evans and Co., you can uh, have uh, so many whatever to import. You wouldn't call that uh, corruption. What you? if it doesn't agree? Uh, but we're going to go there. Well, let's deal with the first well, one. Well, because because you, you acknowledge I asked the question, so what if it doesn't well, agree? Well, but you haven't answered my one question. But I take it that you will accept that if it is agreed, Evans and Co. can have it. There's no corruption. There's no, no, I, no corruption. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. And well, then my, yeah, sure, because why? of the fact that whether because you, it is your whether that you that agree, if it is, if it is not whether you to. agree uh -huh. or you don't, okay. we simply do not trust politicians to make these decisions. Uh, unfortunately, with the decisions people's have interest to be made by uh -huh. politicians. Uh -huh. I mean, the uh, nature and, of the system is like and, that and, somebody has to make a decision. And, and, and that is why we put Evans. in place sufficient checks. Uh, Evans, uh, I'm so happy about that. To check discretion. Absolutely. This where, the, where, where are the sufficient I'm, checks I'm coming to, tell you. to check your I'm coming discretion to tell you. Here. No, Absolutely. You ever sitting there today, you see me sweating, I'm answering your question, you in the comfort of your chair, putting all these questions to me. That is why you would not have the responsibility of bringing about this document. I would have to. I'm a politician. But I, I, I'll come back to it. Yes. I'll answer it. So that's why I have the responsibility of doing it. So somehow somebody would have to do it. Then you talk about the... the what are the sufficient the checks checks and you talk about to check the, your discretion my friend, in this matter? Your article 296 uh, of the in Constitution, the Constitution. Yeah, talks about all these discretionary whatever. These discretionary issues are all embedded in the concept of judicial review, which has been articulated in this document ever I want to quote you another aspect of your own act. Yes. It says, in terms of what you consider before you, uh, you grant a permit for yes. an import, yes. the company is required to provide a list of documents. Yeah. One is the particulars of the principal officers, directors, and partners of the company or firm. Yeah. People smell an elephant here. Well, they can smell. It's not, which one is bigger than the elephant? They can smell something bigger than the elephant. You know, again, listen, if the concept In other words, you may want to know all, you know, the fishy, people fishy, to, fishy, to fishy, find fishy, out whether they support the, the elephant or not. You, you but you, but you, you see you why this is no, an issue. No, But no, why do no. you need We're principal of the directors and partners of the, before you grant them a permit? Does give you the political colors? Your office? I mean, we are in this country and we knew about... Uh, well, uh, people who had committed to so much uh, loans from other countries, and uh, I don't want to remind you, you guys, the young ones may not remember, but you are big enough to remember those uh, problems about addresses and listen. It's been two or three, 
fundamental, very important landmark decision in this country, this country, the Supreme Court, mm. about addresses, about the place of, uh, 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 the addresses of companies. But this is not companies. about places. No, this no, is no, about this is principal a, officers, yeah, directors, partners, absolutely. the company and firm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what what, what why do you need that to grant a permit to import a product? Oh, well, that's very important. Okay, so we're trying to make sure that this is all that is Ghanaian centered. A Ghanaian centered is a, a, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, what is the other bit that uh, local, 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 local content, local, local content. content kind of thing? You know, so so I asked you about well, your principal place of uh, uh, trading. Yeah, what is wrong with that? No, you but, don't have been, but, yeah, but, but, but that's, not, that's not my let's question. Let's take them one after the other. Yours is that, uh, well, the, yeah. the, this is the, the owners, isn't yeah. it? Who are the... You ask for digital uh, address, which is what you said, place, etc. The auditor, register general, yeah. is now asking for all this information in any yeah. company but, but, that But that's not my question. Well, that is not your question, but I'm giving you instances of the application, uh, the content of the question you asked me. That, 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 what, that will lead to corruption? How would that be? The fact that I asked who is this person and it is uh, Richard, uh, what call it, uh, yeah, Evans, Evans and Co. Yeah. Yes, Evans, ah, my God, ask Evans, don't give him. Yeah, but um, I'm, I, I, I know, but, that is your fear. But my question is, has, you haven't answered my question respectfully. Yeah, go on. Why, why, why is it relevant to ask yes. for the principal officers, yes. directors and partners of the yes. company before you grant the company why, why license? Why don't you want to, to know the individuals you are dealing with? But, but, you don't want to deal with faceless people. You want to deal with human beings, real characters, real human beings. But is it ultimately, you ask a very fundamental question. Where are the checks and balances? Yes. I've told you the checks and balances that you are worried about are all in there. Ultimately, your fear is that because it is uh, Richard Mensah and Co., the stakeholders are Richard Barnes, uh, Richard, uh, Richard what, Richard this and Junior and this and this and ah, uh, and somebody will decide yeah, that not to give that. Them. Is, that They're is talking. what our history says, politicians. Well, I don't do. know about that. I don't know which history you're looking at. I read history, Form 5 and 6 form, and I've done politics all these years and the law. I don't know which history you're talking about. But in any event, we can't back to the check and balances that you rightly put yeah, in and I asked the, the check and where? balances is you say ultimately to the court so, so, that's so, why so what else can we so, do so, <laughs> that, so, that, so that's, that's your you check decided and that I don't like your head and that's uh, really I like your head yeah. you know your head mm, yeah, yeah. just like well so as well that's why but because I don't like your head I won't give you you go to court and that it's, uh, it, it's, it's a complete non secretary I mean, by, by way of uh, making a decision I mean it, it, it cannot follow that because of your face your head or whatever uh, so much uh, negative decision will be there the court will have no hesitation in the, 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 the timing of this. I mean, you're going into an election year. I mean, why people are reading a lot into this. Why are you? The, that the, what? The, oh, that, okay. But that, that, yeah, that, going that, into election, so what? You're going, well, that, uh -huh. that this, obviously, uh -huh. some uh -huh. have raised a concern. That word. That it is placed at this time, year before the election, because uh -huh. it could actually potentially uh -huh. become an avenue for, for raising uh, funds. Let's be, let's be reasonable. I don't stop pandering to this foolishness. I'm not going to answer any more of these questions. I mean, I've told you what it's all about. There's a court, and everybody thinks that any, anyone uh, has that mentality that uh, is going to line the pockets of whoever. Uh, what, uh, when, uh, which one is it going to manifest itself? How is it going to line itself up? You are afraid that I won't give you because you are Evans Mensah. Yeah, On the possibly. other hand, the flip side, you are afraid that what? what how, do I, how do I become corrupt? How do I get corrupted by giving you the license or by not giving you the license? I mean, let's talk about consultation. Yes. What consultations went into I'm this? I'm all over the place. All over the what, place. What's the evidence of this? Because I've heard oh, the you know, you know, you food, and asking, food, food and beverages uh, you, you, you head say he, he, wasn't, he wasn't consulted all at right, all. Have you seen it? Secret and secret and cabinet and all of that. You know, listen, a government, and I've made this point, you know, there are certain things that... We do things, we do consultations. I mean, you but, suggest but who, one point that the you president... Consult? Yeah, beyond are, cabinet, obviously. Yes, beyond cabinet. Uh, no, uh, that's not the point I'm making about cabinet consulted or cabinet not consulted. But I'm saying that it's all demand that... NDC was asking me that all my notes and whatever, eventually, not the committee, I mean, eventually the leader was asking me, all my notes and everything, I should let them see. Yeah, does it make a lot of sense? Uh, mm -hmm. When did you hear that? But anyway, you were asking about who, who, the who you consulted? Yeah, I'm going to give you the list and then you see uh, what is it that was done. And then check with all of them. Check with all of them. Listen to this. Uh, after the objective, then uh, stakeholders invited to various uh, consultations included. Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Immigration Services, the Ministry of uh, our own representatives, Food and Drugs Authority, 
the Standards Authority, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Ghana Union of Traders Association, Association of Ghana Industries, Importers and Exporters Associations of Ghana, Rice Farmers and Producers, Poultry Farmers and Association, Ghana International, but I think you've gone through this list. Institute of uh, Statistical, uh, Statistical Social and Economic Research, and then private sector stakeholders. Now, interestingly, recommendations from the stakeholder engagement. After the consultations, the following recommendations were received from the stakeholders. The list of the selected products should be expanded to include the following. Baby diapers, sanitary pads, electrical cables and conductors, copper, aluminium, roofing sheets, steel pipes. Hmm. And you say importers and exporters were part of the making that recommendation. You, you, you mentioned, you mentioned them. All of this. And they you all agreed to actually expand. And expand for the expansion. And as we speak, you say that uh, you are replacing cement with parts. Because there's Sanitary a separate parts. document for... Okay. Uh, I mean, no, no. Cement based, based on the recommendations. Of, yeah, that I'm replacing... Take out the cement and the, then include it uh, that, and bring in sanitary diapers. That diapers, diapers. Whatever, yeah, sure. Okay. So, so those are the people you consulted. Yes. And so when you heard on radio, yes. the food and beverages, you know... Association say they were not part of it. Uh, funny enough, um, uh, um, let me just check. Food and beverages. Yeah. That's why I wanted that document. That's why I wanted that document. Mm. Are you almost done? Yeah, well, food and beverages and Nguta. The uh, Ghana yes. Union Traders Association. They, they, they've actually, actually been included in uh, the committee. They are now members in, in of the, the committee. Now? Yes. So there's a new there's there a new is, I mean, architecture. I told you, you rushed, you know, you rushed okay. and then you got hold so of So you've included Guta now? Uh, check no, the, this is the check, new one. This is the, the new one. Let me just yeah, go to the... Yeah, the one I just gave you. Check. So this is the, the new the document. Yeah, yes, check, yes. Yeah. I'm going to go... You said you've included Guta now. Just check and let's see. Okay. Let's, let's see if that um, fact is here. So trade ministry, go ministry of responsible. the bottom and who are there. Oh, okay. So let me go to it now. This is a new document, updated one. It says, before we had, uh, okay, Food and Drugs Authority. Is there? Now you've uh -huh. added an expert mm -hmm. in international trade nominated by minister. Okay. You've added the Association of Ghana Industries. They were there before. Uh -huh. You've added the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce. They were there no, before. That's before. Mm -hmm. The Ghana Union of Traders Association. Is that a Guta? Nominated by the Ghana Union of Traders Association. That's Guta. Yes, yeah, that's, that's Guta. Guta is there. Then you also have added yeah, the, M, yeah. the Food and Beverages you Association see? of Ghana. <laughs> nominated by the Food and Beverage Association of Ghana. Evan, don't rush about some of this. Things, you know, you get it wrong. You know, wait for the final product. And they don't okay. listen to all the hype all over the place. It's so you've got a Food and Beverage Association we, 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 we and Guta. We time. We, we, but but I ask the question again. When was this amendment made? Today? Um, no. I mean, the weekend? After, no, after we met with our colleagues. You okay. know, this was Last some of week, the suggestions. Friday? Yeah, this was some of the suggestions Friday. That so this is, this is so, literally over so, the weekend. No, no, no. 22nd. 22nd. Yeah, the very so, first meeting. Mm. This was some 22nd of the was on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. So then, this so, must have been between and Thursday and Friday. I think, yeah, Thursday, Wednesday or so, um, uh, following the meeting between uh, the consultation among the leadership, mm -hmm. some of these um, uh, groups were, were added. But I think they're sticking one which they said they wanted. But you see, I, I think that's actually not the case. Because if it was, we agreed that we we're going to insert that. Why would they still insist on not allowing us to, to, so, to do this? So as I speak, as I speak, yes. the freight forwarders, importers and exporters, uh, food and yeah. beverages, yeah. Chamber of they petition parliament yeah. on this. They petition parliament. Well, it's okay. I mean, let you and I agree that in matters of this nature, you're going to get 100% happiness. And, and you, you say so that, and you say that, um, mm -hmm. now yeah. you've included them as, a, they, they are the decision makers. Decision makers, yeah. Okay, but it comes yeah. back to the point. Yeah, decision is subject to your uh, final, uh, I'm tired, final say. I'm, I'm tired on that particular, um, and, particular and, point. And, and, and having said that, yes. having said that, where do you go from here? Because you still need this late. Yeah, it will be late. When? Um, I'll try tomorrow and see. You'll okay. try. That's well, an admission that no, you no, may fail. No, no, no. Well, let's, you see, ultimately, I'm not the speaker. I'm not the leader. My leader who is the leader of the house, and that's government business. Would, you, see, you, you see the order. There must be an order. It's a procedure. Mm. There must be an order paper. This item would have to be on the way we indicated here. And then uh, on the particular day, if it is tomorrow, he would have to get up and say to the speaker, um, Mr. Speaker, we now want to present this document. The minister uh, is here to present the document. 
I mean, that's how it's done. I, at this stage, have no control. I sit at the back there. I work the leadership. I mm. work my leader, um, who then tells the speaker that this is what he, he, he wants done. But this is the point that consistently I've been making. At this point, it, 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 it should be over. Because mm. nobody should have control if we're going by the dictates of the Constitution. Mm. It says when the minister, whoever is presenting, is ready and is presenting it, he presents it. Full mm. stop. So it should be a matter of natural uh, mm. uh, uh, development. When the, uh, speaker, uh, the leader tells the speaker that we're going to do this, he has to say, okay, uh, you see the minister here? Okay, you want to lay your distance? Yeah, go ahead. So you try again that tomorrow. Is, well, yeah. yeah, you know, so, but when uh, your colleagues on the other, your friends on the other side stand up and they jump to the, uh, shout from the rooftop, we wouldn't agree, we wouldn't agree. We wouldn't agree on what constitutional or statutory basis, Evans. Um, so... Today, do I mean, what, what's your direct response to the petition that the food and beverages and others have submitted? I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? Uh, Would you sit with them at least? Because I think, I think we sat with them already, but if we have to, you know. But I think the consolation in all of this, uh, uh, I, I don't quite get the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the drift. Is it that they, won't, they want this, uh, the situation, the status quo, anti to be as it is? Their point is that. Is that this is a policy that, of course, everybody agrees. However, the yes. implementation... Uh, no, no, you say everybody agrees. Well, we, fun, fundamentally, we fundamentally we everybody wants this economy so structurally changed fundamentally. So how do we then implement it? This is a way of implementing I, 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 use, I use the word fundamental yes. change. Yeah. This is not a fundamental change. The argument is that fundamentally, mm -hmm. you have to empower local... Uh -huh. Create a policy that enables local production before you do this. That's a Ever, fundamental Ever, change in the economy. It goes without saying that these are the things that we intend to do. Mm. That, uh, ultimately, what will be the point? In the simple, we do know where we are starting from, mm. the starting blocks. We do know that there is such deficits in the system. We're saying that we want to restrict. But you only put a restriction in the place without any effort to bump up your production. How are you going to uh, balance the so system? So where, where's the complementary so, policy uh, to but, encourage But that? you see, this is the thing. What do you think we have been doing here? What do you think I've been doing? I guess sometimes I leave this place about 11 o'clock. You think we don't have any policies? 1D1F and all those things going that, on. That hasn't, great, it hasn't you know, the yielded the money. results. Well, it hasn't... Well, yielded said, the results that you yourself no, have no, spelled up for us. No, 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 no. no. You're not meeting, you're no, not fulfilling no, your, no, your potential. No, no. The full potential The full potential cannot be realized overnight. But, 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 it but, 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 but therein lies the strength of the argument. That, that what? Why don't you wait? to see substantial many, results yes. there, improve the local production uh, before you implement it. A distance this. of so many thousands of miles, you know what? You start mm. with the little steps. You know, these are our little but, steps. Um, but towards, what, bottom um, line, you will engage them. Um, if we haven't already engaged them, why not? But they have we a petition, so definitely oh, no, they would, are would, aggrieved. Would, yeah, we would. Mm. They are aggrieved to the extent that what? They say that... Well, they are they aggrieved see, because they see, believe it's not addressing the fundamental think, challenge think, that they I face. Think, I think uh, if I'm not... Uh, for all these hours, uh, maybe I hadn't tried previously, but I think after all these hours, uh, the amount of uh, talking we've done, somebody should get it now. The remit of the ministry is simply to put together the fundamentals for us to be able to help our local producers. In so doing, we're also saying that we do intend to have our payment of balance issues so that we don't expend all our monies on importation. In the meanwhile, because we are aware that we don't have a full installed capacity, we are going to put in place all the measures. In companies that rice producing, uh, companies that we have met with, the, uh, the poultry farmers that we have met with, the proposals that we have put in place. How are we going to ramp up our production? I'm telling you, so at a point first. in time, but with that, all of that, at a point in time, Zoom Lion assured us that by this December, by this December, uh, if everything was in place, they were going to make sure that uh, production of rice alone had gone up significantly. In the process, we spent all this time going on the process of a consultation. And then here we are, somebody suggesting that well, we haven't consulted enough. My deputies have been all over the country. We have so many consultations in the conference room. And uh, uh, we thought we had put together a, 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 a mm. good case, at least to those uh, who were present. At, uh, As it stands, you're not going to get this uh, uh, passed um, before December. I mean, it's going to go into next year. Well, 21 days. If we don't have 21 days. Yeah, you don't have 21 days. days. But you see, again, days. it wasn't the point. When you kept on saying that at the time, the mm. time, the time, I thought your point was that, well, Christmas and all of that. Yeah. No. Anyone, did, you, did, you want, did you want to... No. Matured before no, Christmas? No, anyone, if it matures before Christmas, it will still not affect imports or products for Christmas. 
any importer who is desirous of bringing in anything for the purpose of Christmas will longer have put the orders and uh, mm. uh, will be receiving them mm. anyway. And uh, the thing about it is that there's also a clause, there's transitional clause in there. Those who have already imported their staff and whatever, they have three they months, have three months and to then write further extension and whatever to get this. this, this. But I, I, I think going forward, uh, let me look into the camera and address those, uh, those, uh, uh, the, the naysayers and uh, those who are not so clear. Listen, my, those who are watching and those who are listening to me, let, let, let's get this fundamental issue uh, right. It is not an attempt to line Katie Hammond's pocket with anything. It is not an attempt to line the MPP's government's uh, coffers with anything. It's nothing to do with going into an election next year. It is simply an attempt to, to revive the economy, uh, which has experienced some rather difficult headways. Uh, I don't think it is acceptable for a country to expend as much as the figures that I've quoted. 2021, we spent about $13.6 billion to import all these um, uh, products. Um, last year, we did close to the same figure to import these um, products into the country. Meanwhile, the producers in this country, some of whom, just before uh, Richard and your guys came here, somebody had come to even talk about uh, flour. Apparently, the installed capacity of flour is more than consumption, yet we are importing uh, uh, flour. But, so this is the reason. We want to, as I said, two-prong uh, measure. Um, control the import so that our balance of uh, payment, uh, uh, payment issues could be um, resolved uh, one way or the other. And then also concentrate on uh, our local um, production. We'll keep importing and importing and importing. In the end, <laughs> almost invariably, we'll be where we are. And yet we talk about unemployment. We talk about uh, not helping dom domestic production. We're saying a question is turning up and up again. What is it that you're doing for, um, and, uh, and to make sure that the, the gap is bridged? People should allow for rational thinking. A ministry, I mean, like trade industry, which is charged with the trade and industry developments of the country, uh, would be given some credit um, uh, to appreciate that you would need to bump up your own local production. And if it does not accept it, at least if it's not taken for granted, we are articulating it. That, that is what we are doing. And from all indications, we may not have uh, successfully um, uh, achieved uh, what we set out to do. Uh, but then again, it is early days yet. 1D1F is doing what it, it can. Um, uh, private sector uh, uh, production, is, it's going up. I just indicated Zoom Lion, um, uh, the, uh, uh, what is the name again? Uh, the, the, the poultry farmers, uh, uh, Daco farms, and others, uh, they have all been here. Government is, 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 I probably wouldn't tell you how much money has gone into this. And um, quite a lot of money have gone into helping them to, to set up. We have what we call the participating um, uh, financial institutions. Uh, uh, government has paid so much uh, money to these institutions, uh, bank institutions, uh, which have gone uh, to reduce. Uh, the percentage rate of uh, interest paid by this company. That is part of the, uh, well, those are part, uh, uh, segments of the financial ambience that government is putting in place to make sure that their concerns are resolved. Concerns will be resolved. Ultimately, I think we will get there. You don't start from anywhere and uh, we sit up and think that uh, we're always important and not concentrating on our local um, production. Mm. We'll get anywhere. I'm afraid we will not be getting anywhere. Finally, you also want to touch cement. You have a regulation before the... Touch uh, cement. We're not not want to touch cement. Uh, touch cement. Yes. yes. What, you, you have a regulation. That's been laid. Funny what, enough. What, what, what does that say Funny to enough. When we went there the other day to the 22nd November meeting, my colleagues on the other side said the interest was mostly in the, in the cement one. They wanted to be sure about the cement one. They seem to, to be fundamentally what, what do you want to do with comfortable cement? With, the, mm. with the import substitution bid. And then all of a sudden it, it turns uh, it's truncated. The interest is now in that one and not in the cement what one. What do you want to do the with cement the cement one? The cement one has been laid. Well, to ensure standards. Look, all the infrastructure in this country, everything, is cement. You don't have qualitative um, cement. You don't have uh, cement production um, complying with standards. Buildings would collapse. We have sitting here been receiving reports about uh, how shoddy the production 
um, methods of some of these companies are, are, are becoming. Um, so in the last few weeks, the um, Director General of Ghana Standards Authority came to me and told me about well, three particular companies uh, around the Kumasi Ashanti region area. Kumasi, Cement, um, three others. Their standards went good, went um, in conformity with the, the Ghana um, standard. They were warned to, to set up and uh, shape up and uh, get the standards right. They wouldn't do it. I authorized uh, him um, to close them down until the, um, they came to the table and decided that uh, they would uh, conform to our standard. This is what we have here. To, for now, again, the installed capacity of cement production in this country is so many miles. You're not limiting the importation of cement, are you? And this is not uh, about importation of cement. Mm. This, this indeed, is about standards. Indeed, there's already uh, a, a, a document. Funny enough, uh, the entities are not complaining, but there is a document here, uh, which I think uh, LIEs, which was um, uh, put in place, uh, legislated during the time of the NDC, um, uh, restricting, um, I'm sure it was during the time of the NDC. I think it's 2016 or so, um, uh, it wasn't asked. Um, but there is, there is uh, don't worry about it, if I'm wrong, that's fine. But there is an ally um, which, is, um, which controls the importation of cement. But this one, particularly, it's about standards. Mm. Make sure that there is now no license for anything. Anyone just gets in here mm. and start uh, set up a cement factory. It doesn't matter the location, the geographical location, whether it's among population, whomever, whatever. They just mm. cite their cement mm. Um, mm. apart. Uh, and and, and so, to be um, clear, yeah. the, in the... Uh, original bill for the restrictions on importation of strategic products. Yeah. It included cement. Oh, well, yeah, because we, are, we hadn't drawn our attention to the fact that it had... Um, but a, following a constitution, one. you have taken that out. Yes, sure. So cement will no longer be part of those strategic products that you will limit or restrict its imports. But I've told you, mm. you the concern is with the, the restrictions. The another one already. anyway mm. that controls the importation. Listen, I tell you, I mean, again, that is, uh, I mean, I will tell you this. Um, uh, it is for the minister uh, in the end to sign. Um, two, three months ago, um, my desk as a document. I'm looking at it, and the people were threatened. Jata Cement. Everybody knows who Jata Cement is. Jata Cement belongs eh? to the brother of John. Well, everybody knows it. Uh, people were, fri were threatened, literally. What's the problem? Jata what? Cement, yes. <laughs> this is for Ibrahim. Yes, what's the problem? Bring me the documentation. As he said, this is like, no, 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 my you signature. It for him. What is the big deal? Who, who, whether people were threatened, your own people? Who, 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 those who presented the application, you know, uh, all over the place. Let's people were threatened. Your own people in your party were threatened that you're going to approve. You're not listening. Are you listening? Well, I'm asking for well, clarification. Those who presented the document because of something. Uh, they were they, not sure you were approved. Well, because of something they had done in the documentation. What have they done in the I documentation? I will tell you. Katie Hammond, thank you very much. I like you. And that is Katie Hammond, is the Minister and Industry, answering our questions on the very contentious subject of the regulations that he's seeking to introduce and lay in the House. He says he will try again tomorrow. That will place restrictions on the importation of 22 items. As we've just learned, that is going to be expanded now, I believe, to 23? 23. 23. Enjoy the rest of your evening.